And once we have identified those BIM uses, what do we need to include in the BIM execution plan? Should we talk about that? Let's do it. So here are a number of those. Starting with an introduction, why we are really doing mm -hmm. the project and what the goals are on the project and understanding those uses and the processes in order to be able to achieve them, going right the way through to the scope. Let's take a look and a deeper dive into some of these. Yeah, a typical BIM execution plan would have anything from project information, the contact team list, details, um, even links to other web application or just sharing where all of the files or models are stored. Yep. And introductions we mentioned there, but they could be different for each and every project that you work on. Some projects might need to have a very robust mission statement and mm -hmm. a definition of why we are even starting to adopt them. Some might be slightly further along. It might be more training related introductions and others might be much more detailed into the processes and understanding how they're going to deliver not wanting to cram the wrong set of information and introductions to the yeah. wrong teams. And then we need to define what the BIM uses are. So why are we doing this? If we're coordinating, what's the value that we're looking to achieve? The 40 phase schedule, why are we doing that? Why are we cost estimating? Why are we getting these quantities? Let's identify the customer and the reason why they're about to do it. There are many uses that, that you can, as we uh, mentioned a little while ago, but align with your own team, what your services are, what your possibilities are as well. So aligning that with the client um, will you know, align expectations on those BIM uses right away. And then which processes do you need in order to achieve those BIM uses? Is there a flow diagram that requires a step-by-step -step explanation about how you're going to run a coordination workflow, for example? And then we look at standards. Yeah. Are you following the ISO standards? So ISO 19650, are you looking at being able to define, for example, the same terminology so that everyone is on the same page? We, we highly recommend yeah. that you do that. <laughs> You know, what is an asset information model and how is that driven? What are the connections? What, how do you go through scoping that and finding out what informs it? Yeah. Who are the parties that are involved and why? And for someone who's managed multiple models, you know, receiving multiple models from other companies, different team members, um, standardizing them has helped so much because you're combining them into one platform for coordination. So the naming of the, the equipment, the piping, the just all the way down to the naming of the files would extremely help so standardize your keeping your everyone the same yeah. yep same page so you know where to find things mm -hmm. and then on the technology side how are you going to support that are you going to have interactive workspaces are you going to recommend certain hardware computers whether it's ipads etc and then the software version so that everyone can stay in touch and it's more a recommendation to align yeah. rather than to mandate depending on how you're working right and then deliverables how do you define your information requirements and your handover and essentially the format that you are looking for? Yeah. We recommend open BIM standards and IFC as a transfer mechanism, as a, as a file transfer. There are other requirements that people do put into contracts as well. And we would just say that it's needing to be a contract. So on the right hand side there, we're talking about adding, adding a signature block so that we can actually get people's buy-in, uh, contractual buy-in. And we'll talk about other buy-in later. And then scope, yeah, definitely. probably the most important part definitely of a BIM execution. Yeah. yeah, definitely the most important part of a BIM execution plan is the scope. You want to align what scope is required, who's responsible, how much information, and again, why why are we doing BIM? What are those BIM uses? So aligning a really clear scope plan can help everyone. So that's talking about why we need an execution plan and what is included, but how do you get your team engaged?